Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to take the HHD H3 uh, 3-in-1 out for the flight review. So I'm going to be, I'm just going to be flying the drone portion today. If you watch my unboxing and overview video from a few days ago, there's a drone, there's a tank, and there's a bouncy jumping, you know, two-wheel car. This can transform into all three of those things. To make the video not so long, I'm going to just divide it up and do the air portion today and probably the ground, I'll probably do a video for both of the ground, but I might actually do three. I might do one for each of the forms it can take. That'll make this video not so long. It would be a very long video to make a, to do a drive review for each and the drone review. Um, I didn't know everything when I was doing the overview of it, so there's a few things we'll discuss here before we actually take it out and fly it. It does have a red LED here in the back and two blue eyes, so that's to help with your orientation. There's no LEDs on the actual arms. Of course, this is a brushed motor drone, but it flies pretty good. I just flew here a while ago, and there's a decent breeze at times, so you know it does have to fight that. But it does flips pretty nice. It's pretty sporty, and uh, you know, like I said, it flies pretty good. The camera is a fixed camera here in the nose. Actually, it does move. I take that back. It moves a little bit. It's not fixed. I'm going to aim it up some. I had it aimed down while I go. I didn't push hard enough. I thought it was fixed. It's actually, you actually can pivot it a little bit. It's only a 480p camera though. So it's, it's just your old 4x3 old TV res, you know, uh, type of uh, video and uh, aspect ratio. But it actually looked pretty decent. The quality was pretty good. There was very faint amount of jello but not much so uh, overall pretty uh, pretty actually pleased with the camera on this guy it had to work really well using it on you know something on the ground you know but it worked pretty good on the drone let me grab the controller okay let's grab the controller the app you're going to use on this i had to scan the qr code to get it it's called the uh HHD UFO so if you search the play store you'll find it that's where the QR code links you to um, they don't tell you the name at all in it in, in the instructions so if you're if you don't scan the QR code you may not be able to find the app so again I'll put a screenshot up of the app uh, on your controls here you've got this is for the car I believe to transform this is a light to turn on and off. This is your, they call it no, noseless mode, but your headless mode and your one key return. This is your auto takeoff and your auto landing. That works really well. This does start your, it does, if I can spit it out, use uh, controls of photo and video in the app. So you don't have to use the app to start it. You will work with the controller. And this is your three rates it has and your 360 flips. I don't like that they have these multi-function on each side of the buttons. It makes it very difficult to remember and easy to press the wrong one. But again, it does have three rates with a fixed yaw and uh, this one lets you do the 360 flips, which it does a pretty good job at. So let's go ahead and turn on the drone. We'll set it down here. The power button is here on the top. Set it down here on the edge of my garage so it's a level surface and not slope. And let's back up here and turn on the controller. Do your binding sequence. To calibrate the gyro on this, it does it when you start it up. But if you need to do it again, it's down and both sticks to the left. And then it'll go through. It blinks for quite a while before it actually starts. You know, it gets the level calibration completed. Now that we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and go into my settings here on my phone. And uh, this is a new phone, so i got to remember where everything is and go in i have airplane mode turned on just to be safe and go in here and you'll find the uh the ufo it's wi-fi ufo with some other characters go ahead and connect to that and it's connected so i don't have my brightness up on my phone all the way here but it's always a good idea though it's going to really drain your battery so you can see and then we're going to go into that app which again was the hhd ufo Go ahead and just press start and it'll come up here with your feed and i'm going to go ahead and uh i don't know if i'll even worry about pictures we'll just do some video the pictures looks just like a screenshot of course of the four by three aspect ratio video so let's go ahead and take it up here and we'll fly it around so i'm going to go ahead and do the auto takeoff you can also unlock the props it's gonna be hard to see from my head cam here if you just do both sticks down and out and then again you can stop it I'm going to use the auto takeoff. So let's just press up on the, the what, would, what would typically be your throttle trim. And it takes off. 
Now again, there is a bit of a breeze today at times. Right now is not too bad. You can see I probably need to give it a little bit of left trim because the breeze is actually right to left today. There's the yaw. It's not very fast. Let's go up to the rates. So there's the yaw. Oop, that's the, uh, excuse me, that was the, the, see I did it right there. I pressed the, uh, the flip button. Let's do that again. There's the fixed yaw. It looks like it actually does speed up a little bit. While I go, I had trouble seeing because of the wind. It's, it does actually, it does actually change a little. So it actually isn't a fixed yaw. It's not much of a change, so I couldn't tell. I was fighting the breeze. Let's do that again. It does actually speed up. So I am mistaken, it is not a fixed yaw. But it's not a huge increase. Let's go ahead and start, I'm gonna go ahead and land it here and we'll start some video. I forgot to do that. So let's do the auto landing. It should come on down here. There we go. Let's go ahead and start recording some video. I think it was the bottom one. Yeah, there we go. And it's, now it's counting. Now we got some video. Let's go ahead and we'll do another auto takeoff. Winds let up some here, so it's actually a little better conditions to fly than it even was uh, 15 minutes ago. So I got it in the highest rate now, as you can hear by the beeps. That's back to lowest rate, not much pitch. There's middle rate, and there's the highest rate. It is altitude hold, so it does tend to still dive bomb a little bit. I'm just, I don't know why that yaw looked like it was fixed in my test flight, but I was fighting a much more wind just a while ago. So it was difficult to see that I was, uh, you know, flying with a fixed yaw, or uh, not a fixed yaw. I thought it was. See, that's, that's really stable. Look at that. You get no wind. It's just hovering perfect. I'm pretty impressed. This is a nice little drone. We'll have to see how the car works and the jumping two wheel car in the tank. But the drone, I, so far I have no complaints on the drone. This thing flies really nice. It's geared and brushed. It's a little noisy. The red props help with orientation because you can't really see those lights very well. Let's do some 360 flips here. That's going to be up on the outside of the right bumper. Let's do it again here. Well, I thought that was doing it. it it did them for me earlier. There we go. Let's see if we got to hold the bumper down and do it while we press. Yeah. I did it a while ago and I don't think I kept my hand on it. But if you just press it and then go, well, now it's doing it. Heck, I don't know what's up. And then go. The first few times I just did that there, it, I, it didn't do anything. Let's try it again. And there we go. Now it's working. So you don't have to press it while you give it flip commands like SEMA usually does. I thought for a second maybe I did because the first few times I pressed flip it didn't do anything. It does It does seem like it, at times here there's a very small amount of input lag which is typical on these Wi-Fi drones. It's not bad but a few times I've noticed it where it just seems like when you've flown hundreds of drones like me um, you notice little things like that, but it's not enough I'd be concerned about. Some can be bad. Most, you don't notice anything or it's very minute, like in this one. But let's try another flip here. Yeah, it's working fine. It raises up. It's pretty clean at flipping. It's a little slow to execute it. But otherwise, I mean, it, this thing flies nice and the flips are, the, the, you know, those flips are pretty clean. I think the control range on this was advertised at 70 meters, I believe. So perfectly fine for just a little line of sight. Well, it's not a line of sight flyer, but looks like, let's see here. I've, oh, I still got video up. My phone gave me some sort of a, a notice on my new phone here, it's LG G8. So I thought I lost the app, but no, it's still going. We got about three, get closing on three and a half minutes of video here. For just a basic Wi-Fi flyer without any kind of HD camera, just a basic standard definition, it's pretty good. Now right there I gave it a yaw input and it, it seemed to yaw farther than I gave it the input to do. And that again, that can be a, res a result of Wi-Fi interference. 
your phone and the controller are on the same frequency. They're both on Wi-Fi uh, 2.4 gigahertz signal. So there's a cross interference and that can usually it limits range more than anything. You may not get the range you would get if you just disconnected it, but you tend to uh, also get some input lag at times or it can be a little bit extra input like that. Very common on these Wi-Fi FPV uh, drones, which are just everywhere. I don't think this drone is new. I believe it was, it's was. it been out for several years. Which is, you know, you typically would see at 720p camera on the newer stuff now. And that's one reason why this one's a couple years old. The SD cameras are more common then. This was sent to me, I believe the website's Funmost, but it didn't load right. I'll have to confirm. Um, it was sent to me by someone I've never worked with before. And I'm not real familiar with, uh, you know, where they even want people to purchase this <laughs> drone. So whatever information I can find out, I'll link in the description here. But I believe my buddy David had pointed this out on an old video from TomTop couple years ago so I can it's not new but if you can get this drone for the right price you know it's the fact that it's a three-in-one it's not just a drone it's probably worth it because just the drone alone if it's a good price I like the drone even if the car and tank features don't work well the drones worth it if it's a good price but again there's some there was some control input lag issues there a few times I gave it some y'all and it didn't go for a moment. You don't do you don't notice it every time and if you've not flown drones much you probably wouldn't even know it. But I can see it. So again the video is only 480p. I confirmed that on the video I took a while ago on my phone. But the video was pretty decent and it wasn't any you know there was maybe just a hair of jello, just a hint of it. But perfectly acceptable amount for a toy drone. It also seems to be getting a pretty good flight time here. I'm gonna go ahead and land it here and stop recording the video so we can get that saved because if the battery dies, I'm gonna go ahead and just stop recording it with the app. So we got some video saved here. We won't worry about any more video, but as you guys probably know, if you're flying one of these along, the battery dies and it lands and then it cuts off the Wi-Fi or if you just do it on your own you will most likely corrupt the video that's being saved on your phone from the Wi-Fi feed because this drone does not have an SD card slot so you're only recording that Wi-Fi feed so it's gonna be there's gonna be some choppiness and broken uh, you know uh, drop frames frozen frames that kind of stuff so but from what I've seen here let's go just do a manual takeoff the Wi-Fi feed actually was pretty decent. I mean, when I was holding it and just aiming it around, it wasn't as laggy as some of them. Some of them you can just see it right up close. You can start aiming it around and you'll see the, that there's like a half second lag or something. And I didn't, it wasn't quite that bad. So the uh, Wi-Fi feed is pretty good. The fact is the SD picture probably, I would think might help. It's not as much to process on your phone so that probably helps out to reduce the lag you know the HD stuff is a lot harder to process and that probably you know I think that makes those drones a little laggier for your phone to process that it really scoots there when I get this breeze from right to left starts pushing it So we'll just go ahead and fly this down here and see what kind of a, a flight time we get. Because my test flight, I was just, you know, I was fighting a lot of wind, and like I said, I didn't even, I thought the yaw was fixed. <laughs> I typically do a test flight, you know, a little bit more thorough, but I wanted to get this drone reviewed. I've had it for too long, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and get it reviewed so we'll see what kind of a flight time we get on this guy 
I want to, I think, again, I'm trying to recall my memory. I think the instructions advertise the 10 to 12 minute flight time, I thought. It does come with two batteries, which is nice. So you can fly the drone, then go drive the car. So it is just a single battery charger. So you, uh, you can't charge two batteries at once and it is proprietary. So the charger is actually quite nice. It sits into this cradle and it has two red lights that flash in the front. And I think it went green whenever the battery was charged. So it's really nice. That it shows you when the battery's done really easily. Looks like we might be losing some power here. I want to see if we have any kind of flashing lights. I don't know. I would expect that the rear red light and the two blue lights in the front ought to flash whenever we reach the LVC. But with a drone this size, a 1S light while the battery's starting to sag, you're going to lose some power. Yeah, see it's starting to do that now. I gave, I gave it, I, I tried to reduce the throttle and it just went to the ground. So we got to be getting low. But I'm surprised we don't have any flashing lights. Let's see if it'll still flip. Yeah. And they typically, these drones will not flip once they reach low voltage. So it's still going. It just, there's got to be a bit of a voltage sag there for the few times that it hit the ground. Yeah, this is, this is like I said, this is a pretty nice little toy drone. I like it. Be nice if I had an HD camera, and of course I'd uh, get the mail truck there making that noise. But, but my really only complaint is like, is the small amount of Wi-Fi lag I see. The wi well, the Wi-Fi induced lag on the controls, not the actual video on the screen. I said the screen here, I'm looking at it. The Wi-Fi lag's not bad, but there obviously is going to be some drop frames. So there was a bit. I kind of flew up my head. That was a bit of a of a stuck or delayed control because of the uh, Wi-Fi causing some delays and the inputs with the sticks. Again, it's not bad, and it, you don't notice it all the time. But every once in a while, it does it just enough that someone experienced like myself will see it. Uh, we got flashing blue lights here in the front, so we are at the low voltage. And boy, that. That forward pitch there stuck. All right, see that? Let's see if I can show you guys why. Let's see what I can do. I'm gonna give it forward pitch and let off, watch. All right, that time I didn't do it. Still have some notice on my phone. Let off, All right, it's not doing it there. Now it's gonna land, I think. But a few times, the one time I first, oh, there it's gonna land. A few times you give it the forward pitch like that and it comes forward and then all of a sudden it went another three feet before it stopped itself and that's just that that Wi-Fi doing that so that happens um, that's my biggest complaint though is some of the input lag from the uh, control so if you're a beginner I would probably avoid this drone just because that input lag could cause you to mess up and crash it into your house or something if you're an experienced flyer like myself this will be no problem to fly at all because it's not a very big deal so just keep that in mind. All right, guys, so I'll include a link to wherever this is available. Again, this is the HHDH3. This is a drone portion. I'll come back with another video with the tank and the little hopping guy. So be sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber so you can catch those videos if you're interested. Click the bell so you know when I do upload new videos, guys. And as always, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side.